Hello, it is your favorite, favorite weekend show, Weekend Deal, coming to you from the network service of the NTA. This weekend, it's been all about building a legacy and impacting the society. Now, your legacy is the sum of your personal values, actions, and accomplishment that resonates with the people. It's a way that you make a difference in the world. I mean, whether you like it or not, you are leaving a legacy, but whether that legacy will be positive or negative it's yours to make you know i'm not alone i am with a pretty good looking i don't know i'm looking for more words well i'm looking for it let's see tell but tell me <laughs> your shoes alone eh uh, for you baby for you speechless when i saw you oh like, babe I'm, you look I'm like nice. peshido <laughs> quincy <laughs> Oh, God. You know, oh, it's a pleasure to be yeah. having this uh, ride with yeah. you, patients. Oh, you know, I can't um, yeah. overemphasize that. Mm. We have a rare privilege to be able to change existing narratives for good. So we're talking about legacies. Yes. What are we even doing now? Living footprints, yeah. talking about issues that impact Nigerians, telling them it's going to be well. Mm. One could say, yes. in I a know. way, uh, somebody will say, <laughs> that okay, is legacy That status. legacy <laughs> in its purest form, if you ask me. Yeah. But a lot of people will be watching us and say, eh, they're talking about legacy. How do you build legacy? Mm. I think number one is for you to find purpose. Evaluate your life first. What I'm doing, am I, am I happy? Am I fulfilled? Apart from making the money, is there something that's missing? I Yesterday, we began talking about leaving a legacy with special focus on making positive impact on the society. Society is who? It's you and it's us together. So if we are working well and it's touching you, it's a legacy of sorts. If you are working well and it's going around, that's a legacy. You don't have to be great to start. But if you want to be great, you have to start somewhere. <laughs> and every step counts. Especially now when Francis sets the tone for our conversation today with a background feature. We often call him, you know now, the chief backgroundist, Francis. Take it away. <laughs> In Nigeria where the values of community, leadership, and cultural heritage are deeply cherished. Leaving a legacy is seen as a responsibility for those in positions of influence, whether in politics, education, business, or the arts. A legacy is what you leave behind, looking at the trail, looking at the sands of time, that an individual that was given the opportunity to live and to impact on life and lives around the world normally lives thereafter. If you look at it, it's historical, but it has great impact on our today and our tomorrow. One African that comes to mind is somebody like Nelson Mandela. Looking at the way Nelson Mandela had to go to prison for 27 years to liberate South Africa, to liberate his people, to give black majority rule, a way in into power in his country is an enduring legacy that you and I know will live for a very, very long time to come. In a society like Nigeria, where corruption has often undermined development, political leaders who embrace integrity can leave behind a legacy that transforms the lives of the people they serve. We truly are a blessed country in terms of natural and human resources. But why can't we function properly? In terms of structure, at 64 years, Nigeria has expanded. But in terms of function, it seems to just be a mirage because it has been one problem after the other. This is largely because a lot of those that have been given the opportunity to rule this country, be they democratic, be they military, did not quite give integrity its pride of place. 
a lot of people came to self-aggrandize. A lot of people came to enrich themselves and to enrich their cronies. Now, looking at that is the reason why we are where we are today. Education is one of the most powerful legacies that can be left behind as it equips individuals with the tools to shape their destinies and contribute meaningfully to society. The greatest legacy any man can bequeath to his children is not wealth, it's not material things, it's education, it's human capacity. If the human capacity is there, there is nothing that the human being cannot do. If you look at the strides as far as technology is concerned, I mean, something came up. Some people sat down somewhere, researched, did researches, and that is why we have literally everything today that we have that we can liken to uh, some of the technological breakthroughs. It can be in the area of transport. You can fly from one continent to another in a matter of hours. It can be in the media. We are getting the social media now that is largely borderless. You can send reports almost real time. It can be in the field of medicine. It can be in any other sphere of human endeavor. <laughs> Nigeria is blessed with a wealth of cultural diversity and many individuals across various sectors have left legacies that preserve and promote the country's rich heritage. These legacies, particularly in entrepreneurship, the arts and the creative industries are not only a source of national pride but also economic strength. The Nigerians that have impacted me as a person, I think the first one is our dear late Professor Dora Aquinile. She is a woman whose legacy you cannot forget too soon. She gave her life. She fought for unwholesome drugs and food so that you and I can live healthier lives. May her soul rest in peace. In the world of music, I love Fela. He's no longer with us. But anytime I listen to his songs, I tend to wonder, is the Nigerian problem really new? Or is it that he was just being prophetic? Because as it were, whatever he did say in his songs is what is happening today. And in most instances, it happens to be our sad reality. And hence, I hope that, you know, for its worth, we cannot forget him. Leaving a legacy in Nigeria is more than individual achievement. It is about creating a positive and lasting impact on society. Our focus on Weekend Deal today will be on leaving a legacy in Nigeria. Welcome back and thank you so much, Francis. Always setting the tone and starting our conversation. You know how we said that uh, when it comes to legacies, it's not limited to a people or to some organization. Any organization at all, anybody at all can leave a legacy. Now, what exactly are educational legacies? To tell us more, our next story will dig in. So, let's see it. Egidi State stands out in Nigeria as far as the education sector is concerned. The state prides itself as a state where almost every household has a professor with so many firsts. Professor Adeyemi Ekundayo, the first professor of architecture in sub-Saharan Africa, hails from Egidi State. Professor Olatunde Uluasami, a professor of plastic and maxillofacial surgery, the first in sub-Saharan Africa, as well as many other prominent men and women in the academic world. Education is very much uh, uh, respected in the state. Uh, uh, people want their children to go to primary school and then advance to secondary school, to university, and read to the highest level possible. And that's why, I mean, I'm, I know you you always hear of it as being the bastion of uh, knowledge, the center of knowledge in, in Nigeria, you have many professors and so on. And uh, so that, that's, that's, that's the story of it. Yeah. The fountain of knowledge, as it was known, has some notable scholars that have contributed immensely to the growth and development of education in the country. Are Afe Babalola is a notable figure in Ekiti and Nigeria as a whole in his contribution in establishing the famous Afebabalala University. Pa 
Ogunguaro is a retired teacher who has contributed his quota to the education sector. I retired as a teacher in 1986, it's closer to 40 years ago. I am 90 years old now. I celebrated it in, uh, in June 29. I was 90 years exactly. Now that I'm old, if I die, and it is possible for me to come back again, I will still become a, a teacher because I like the profession. Even though I started from, from the government circle, I taught in primary school together with secondary school as a mathematics teacher. The least teacher you can find in any secondary school in Southwest, public secondary school, is the NCE. Here in secondary schools, you have PhD holders. You have teachers that have one, two, three master degrees. In primary school, there are some teachers. I still remember the economics teacher, Master Oyemi, who we organize extra curricular activities, especially in lessons, the classroom lessons for us, even at his layer weekends. So the kind of our friendship and the closeness with our teachers really encourage us to put in more effort because we wouldn't like to disappoint them. One of the many landmark institutions that have been in existence for around 100 years is the Christ School, which is both a household name and an embodiment of excellence as most prominent sons and daughters of Ekiti State and beyond have passed through the school, amongst whom are governors, ministers, captains of industries and several technocrats. So the cabinet of Governor Bayomi Ibanji, seven of us are alumni of Christ School. There's no other school with that number of uh, cabinet members. Five of the uh, others, KBACs in the Kitty State, are alumni of Christ School. Five. And a new crop of professors were promoted, were announced as promoted at the Ekiti State University, and uh, seven of them were Christ School alumni. That just gives you a flavor of even this, currently as we are, uh, the impact of Christ School. We of course know that the immediate past governor of uh, Ekiti State, Governor Fayemi, was an old student of Christ School. Over those years, the school has shaped the destinies of prominent Ekiti sons and daughters who have made remarkable impacts in their various fields of endeavors. Undoubtedly, inclusive education is the foundation for dynamic and equitable society. In addition to the giant strides the government of Ekiti State has recorded in education sector, individuals and non-governmental organizations also sponsor the education of indigent children in Ekiti State. At our own end at God Art Foundation, we do award a scholarship for our primary school students, especially those ones that their parents are having financial constraints or uh, their parents are or those ones that are maybe single orphan or uh, double orphan. So in order to so or support them so that they can have this quality education. Indeed. Qualitative education is the key to unlocking the golden door of the future. And the beautiful thing is that no one can take it away from you. It's We Can Do. Many thanks, Kitty. We love the way you wade into the conversation. And we continue. We're going to enrich our discourse because our guests are here. Please, you join us to meet, greet, and welcome them. First up, we'll welcome J.B. Teveshima, a humanitarian and the founder of Comfort Gomimi JB Foundation. He's a family member, but we've not seen him for some time, but it's great to welcome him again to the home today. Let's just profile. Welcome. You're welcome, Mr. JB. Thank you so much. <laughs> okay, nice it's around. just good to have you again in the studio. Thank you so much. I really okay. appreciate it. Um, uh, we have another guest here. You know how we, t we told you earlier that uh, most times to find purpose and live legacies, you need to join a community of people or an organization uh, that is set or designed 
to impact life and that's what our next guest did she is a young woman uh, in order to find purpose to join this beautiful community uh, that is touching and impacting the lives of people she is basira musa unisa and she belongs to the divine care conglomerate foundation let's see her profile Welcome, Welcome Ajia Basira Musa Yunusa. Yunusa. It's great to have you with us on Weekend Deal today. Thank you. We man. have uh, Mr. JB. He's a family member. Uh -huh. we'll welcome you to you the family. You're welcome to the family. Yes. Nice Thank you very us. much. Good morning. <laughs> and I'm happy to be here today. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. Okay, let me start with uh, Mr. JB. We're talking about legacies and for something to be a legacy or for someone to even be associated with the word legacy it must be impacting society first up so um you are touching lives what is what gives you that impetus to go out there and change the narrative for people with your foundation oh, thank you so much um for having me now there are lots that people go through mm. and there are a lot that people impact into people's lives yeah. And uh, there are some negativities that people turn into positivities, yeah. trying to see how they can put people through about life. A person's legacy is a reflection of their values and characters sure. and the impact they are having on people's lives. Sometimes you go through a lot of pains to make people happy. Mm. So I have gone through a lot mm. and have decided that I give to humanity my best because that's the only thing that I own life right now. Mm. As I'm talking to you, I look at myself as the last person on earth because mm. I've acquired everything in life at a point in time, mm. but now I have started afresh. Mm. For that reason, I put myself as the last born of the world. Mm. The only thing I have to give into uh, impact in people is to see how I can give my best. Mm. I can make people happy where it is possible for me to make them happy. The people who are in need, that in my category for me to take care of, I will always do that. Mm. I have a classification of people in life that I am working on and I'm supporting. Mm. And I want to make sure that at the drop of my blood, I will give all my support. So that when I am not there, mm. and when I am not there, especially now that I will start having babies when I already had like, old babies and there are no more. Mm. And then like my younger brother, I, my first child was 10 years before he even got married. Now he has children. I used to remember when uh, the, my children would be complaining that, uh, I mean, his brother's children would be complaining that, ah, uh, uncle, uh, genius beating me. I said, genius, don't do that. But now I belong to the category of my younger brother's children beating my children because I'm not even married, mm -hmm. you see. So I have tested so much in life and I want to give back to people that doesn't know I want to use the negativity of my life to impact positive things in people's life. Hmm. So legacy is what you choose for yourself. Hmm. Indeed. I mean, I can't even say it more. Legacy is intentional. And you're just a classic um, case of turning negative into positive. And I'm sure a whole lot of Nigerians are watching and saying, if somebody can turn, it, uh, turn that bad situation to positive, then... I can do it. Now, young Hadjia, <laughs> your smile is amazing, number mm -hmm. one. Uh, tell us about the divine, the divine Care Conglomerate, Care Conglomerate Foundation. What do you do? How are you living legacies? How are you touching the lives of people? Thank you very much. Um, before I, I um, start with the um, 
introduction of divine care i want to introduce my president first uh, talk about her what does she do my and uh, the name of my president is um, miss prosperity divine or we mm. called her the world best philanthropist mm. and mm. she is truly the world <laughs> best <laughs> wow. <and> every other. <laughs> okay. she is a nigeria mm. born in edo state okay in september many years ago okay to the family of uh, honorable late honorable SK or Jezbolo okay. um, Ojomo mm. and Mrs. Uh, Omome or Jezbolo. Miss mm. Prosperity studies um, computer science <laughs> from the famous Uniben. Okay. Then she relocated to Canada in the year. 2005. Okay, so how did she start touching life? Tell us how, about the foundation. Yes, okay. the, what does the foundation do? In 20, in December 2021, mm. Divine Care Conglomerate Foundation was founded. Okay. And our first project was the Ifako General Hospital Lagos. She renovated their antenatal ward. Wow. She provided them with cheers mm. and also um mount a television which mm. even as i'm speaking to you now everyone she subscribed it she subscribed it for them mm. so that the pregnant women we will feel comfortable relax. Relax. Yeah, this and, relax. Relax. Yes. <laughs> and they can laugh yes 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 <laughs> that is amazing. our main priority yes. making people happy mm. okay so in january 2022 mm. we introduced our monthly food drive mm. we started with the um cook food Mm. When I say cook food, not ordinary food, though, mm. I mean good food that even the president can comfortably <laughs> sit in his house. And eat. <laughs> it's, that's Are you doing that nationwide? We do it across five different states in Nigeria. Nesarawa here, Lagos State, Onyo State, Kaduna State, and Ogu State. Well Thank done. You. Your foundation seems to be making an amazing yeah. impact. And you know what happens about legacies such as this? People are inspired. Yes. Because there are many who are saying, what can I do? Can I, I do? know there's the whole, people are, these are financially mm. daunting times mm. for everyone. Mm. But how do I pick the group of people I can start with? Mm. That's a very critical question, uh, JP Foundation. Please tell us, you know, to, to, how do you categorize a group of people that you help? Because these times are daunting for everyone. How do you now select? Okay, is it... Now, we heard about single orphan. We heard about double orphan. Those that have lost father and mother. Mm. We heard those that have lost one parent. Mm. Those who have disabled, you know. How do you now pick? How often do you touch their lives? Uh, you see, a legacy is all about choice. Mm. We make yes. and the actions we take mm. during our time on it mm. you once you know your purpose mm. you go for it i support people who suffer emergency trauma cases especially accident Accidents. survivors oh. so i deal with accident survivors huh. i go to hospitals there are some people who were unconscious when the accident occurred there, so there are some people who have lost their memories hmm. they don't even know where they come from they don't know where they are going I identify with those kind of people. I link them through psychological counseling, mm. educational scholarship, ski and vocational training, mm. and then letting them regain their sanity and dignity back oh. to the society. Amazing, wow. amazing. I, I don't even know how to quantify wow. that. That's so they get counseling That's as well? Amazing. Yeah, they get counseling. Mm. I partner with a lot of um, psychologists who mm. are ready to give in their best to make sure that people who suffer these trauma cases regain back their sanity. You see, <coughs> people do a lot, but we are in a country when less is appreciated. Mm. There are some people who go outside their scope of preference to make sure they put in the best to see how people stand on their feet. Mm. There are medical doctors who are ready to use their salaries to pay hospital bills for people. Mm. They are still those people. Mm. I still have lawyers who are ready. There are some cases where you go to court and the monies that are involved, the lawyers are ready to take it upon them. Mm. Free. Pro bono. Free. Yeah, pro, pro bono. bono. Pro bono. So I belong to a society where we link up with ourselves. We have a WhatsApp page. Mm. The people who are ready to volunteer mm. to humanity. So it's not all about money in this case, mm. but it's all about the impact that we create in people you. and see how people regain you. back their sanity 
and dignity. You need to go to the hospitals and see how many people are abandoned. Okay. You need to go to the hospitals and see how many people are abandoned in the hospital. Oh. Because they don't have medical bills people, to pay. People to pay their bills. Yeah. And there are people who are God sent. Sometimes somebody just call you. I saw your program. How can I help? Oh. Hmm. I have people in Yanya Hospital. There was an accident. Seven people dead. Fifteen people survived. They are in the hospital. No medical bills. Sir, please, can you take care of the bill? Hmm. They go ahead. You know, you know, you know, I, I discovered something about Nigerians. A whole lot of people who have the money who don't have the time to go out there and touch life. They're looking for genuine avenues to touch. Because I remember just recently, one activist on Facebook or uh, on social media put his phone number on air and said, I'm going to do this. And right now he has over 200 million. In three days, Nigerians have donated over 200 million. It just tells you that some people are just looking for good causes mm. to GDM. put their money in. But what we would, um, would go to, right now we're going to look at economic and cultural legacies. What is it all about? NTA Legas, take it from there. A nation's cultural heritage is also a source of wealth for economic development through tourism, art, music, films, among others. The advantage of preserving our cultural legacies, therefore, cannot be overemphasized. Notable personalities whose works and legacies have endured over time include Professor Bruce Onobra Prayer in painting and sculpture, Fela and Nicola Pukuti and Professor Sir Victor Owaifo in music, Professor Wale Shoyinka and Chira Achebe in literature, and Hubert Ogunde and Tunde Kalani in theater and films. <laughs> Talking about living an enduring legacy that has stood the test of time in cultural preservation and economic empowerment, a perfect feat is an icon and epitome of cultural renaissance, Chief Mrs. Nike Okudaye and her enterprise, Nike Heart Gallery. I started uh, my center in Oshobo by training the trainers. When I train you, you must train other people. I started that one in 1967 in Oshobo in the backyard of our house. So small, small, after I start with 20 people. So from there, those 20 people I train, I will tell them they must train other people. So now the center has expanded to four locations. The headquarters is in Oshogo. We are having 150 students every three months. And we have trained over 10,000 in Oshogo alone. Turning trash to treasure, Waste to Wealth is one of Nikkei Okundai's many innovations to impact the community by reading the environment of waste while creating wealth for sustainable living through converting the waste into beautiful art pieces. When I moved to Abuja in 1996 to start the recycle, recycling art, the one all the spare parts you threw away, we start turning it to treasure. All these beads, they are from pure water bottles. The one I'm wearing now, they are from pure water bottle. So we are training people how to use this to make a jacket, to make skirt. And after we train you, this is a job. Adire, Adi, Hare has come to stay. So when people say they have no job, this is a job. You don't need to go to the farm. You can do this behind your yard. You can do it at your veranda, the bead work. You can make jewelry for hand. You can make key holder at your house. So I call it training the trainers. So the only way we can preserve it is to be teaching the younger people because Nigeria belongs to the youth. When it comes to promoting our cultural legacies within and outside the country to attract the much needed foreign exchange for economic development, Nike Okundaye does not need any introduction. I've seen it all. <laughs> I've seen it all. A lot of culture. You see the identity, the Nigerian identity inside the drawing and the painting. You can feel it. It's very unique, very different, uh, colorful. It shows the, how Nigerian people are really joyful. They have color. They have even in the simple thing. They are nice. Uh, I'd like to buy everything <laughs> because it's. No, it's very, it's very beautiful. It's different. You see the colors, there is portrait, black and white, different color. 
classic, a little bit classic paints, but also uh, moderns. And uh, I, I don't know how to qualify because it's very different. It's a nice pleasure for the eyes. Culture is what defines a people. In spite of dynamic changes in civilization and technology, the nature of humans has remained unchanged over generations. Therefore, any nation that loses its cultural legacies to influences of colonization will eventually lose its economic power and potential. When we have our sister stations sending in their experiences, it enriches our conversation here and it helps us to keep our paws around the nation and we know what is happening. It is always inspiring to know that there are many good people out there and they seek daily to change the narrative for many. And that's why we're doing what we do, to see where is there a gap? How can we bridge it? Because what we find, uh, patients, mm. and my dear Hajia and Mr. JB, is that um, many young people, if they don't touch them and catch them young yeah. with kindness yes. and uh, comfort and care, yeah. we may be raising a society filled with crooks, fraudsters, bitter people. Because they have no role yeah. model. They're on yeah. the streets. They can't sleep yeah. under a roof. They yes. can't eat regular. Yeah. So they become discontented, to disillusioned, yeah. disappointed. Yeah. They get into petty crime. Mm. Before you know it, they become a menace, like menace you're saying. To the society. So, Hajiya, you know, what touches us now? The kind of thing you're doing. Even the meals you are describing, mm. even for many homes, is still a big deal. Three pieces of meat... Let me go to the chicken first yeah. before I go to the bowl and the bottled water. Yeah, than the food you. Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. You know, it is very encouraging and inspiring. When you give these children or people out on the streets all of these good things, mm. how do they feel? How does it change what they were planning or what they are becoming mm. or their experience out there? You know, at times when we go to the streets to give people their reaction, mm. It got me fulfilled. Mm. At times, after the food drives and all that things, I spent days without eating because I'm just fulfilled. Oh. Out of that, the expression of excitement. The excitement from them. So they are always happy. Just take, um, just take a instance of our uh, raw food donation. Mm. There is a widow that collected the food yesterday. After the program, she came to my house again. She started mm. crying, praying for my president. Do you know what she said? She said her children have not eaten from yesterday afternoon. You understand? So that she could not come to say thank you. She want to rush home and go and cook that meal for them mm. before she come back and appreciate my president. Mm. At times when we give people things, they start crying. They start shedding tears. Because they've not seen kindness yes, like that in a long time. Just imagine in Nigeria of today where rice is 100,000. You give somebody rice, indomie, packet of Maggi, granite oil. We give them packages worth 25 to 30,000 naira. And not one person. We give 50. People. Amazing stuff. They yes. are amazing yes, stuff. Yes, and yes. I, I want to say well done. We just hope that uh, more Nigerians will pick up and do the same thing. You can imagine we have so many people touching lives the way we are doing. We all need to leave legacies. We don't have to be rich. Share that bowl of rice with the next person mm. and you're touching lives. Uh, we will be taking our papers. Now, remember, we didn't take our papers at the beginning. We will take our papers now. And uh, Oh, you're holding one. Can I? Oh, <laughs> I forgot. Okay, uh, 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 maybe we'll just go on a breakfast. Okay, we'll take a break. break. When we okay, come, come back, back. Oh. it'll be nice to tell Nigerians Nigerian what's exactly. happening with the prints. Okay. So that second break beckons now. We'll see you on the other side. And keep your messages coming. <laughs> Our conversation continues. Patience, please take it from here. Okay, so let me just take some few messages. Somebody said, good morning, presenters. I just tuned in and made this conversation. The program is so interesting. Well done. My question is, how would you first, how would you identify the real people, people who truly are in need and those who are not? Because people pretend to be in need while they are not. Although the present situation is really being hard on all of us, please, if possible, can I even have a number? I want to talk to one of you. Okay, and this one says, um, please come, Hadjia, please come to our area. And that was from Matthew. He said, please come to our area. I need food to feed my children. Oh, uh, well, she didn't even say. Mm, so she please said, say, say your area. Say your area. Say your area so that okay, we can visit oh, you. I live at Odepo. 
Ijebu Ode. Oh, Ijebu Ode. Ijebu Ode. Ijebu. Yes, Ijebu. the food they are sharing. I'll be happy to receive only one. Oh, then we come to your area. Don't worry. How do you have heard? <laughs> My name is Abdwahab Aruna. I am one of uh, yes, the beneficiary. Uh, okay, the beneficiary. I am a beneficiary mm. of yes. prosperity empowerment winner. I want yes. to say thank you to Divine Care Foundation and also to Mrs. Basira <laughs> Haji. Mm, Mama nice Basira, nice may you give nice us food. One. You know, yeah, Basira, there's a song actually healing yeah, nice Basira. Yeah, you are. You are doing what you are nice supposed to do. One. Yeah, nice Basira. <laughs> it's good to get. You know what? We asked you about the feedback. Yes. She was telling. And now somebody is now is here. sending mm. the message. Before in I leave here, I will give you the handle to our fan page. Okay. You will go there and see how we dispose money to get small business. In wow. fact, from uh, Miss Prosperity birthday, that was on mm. September 27, mm. to this very moment that I'm talking to you, we have empowered over 50 people with the sum of 100,000 and 150 each. Wow. Men and, and women. Are, men and women. Oh. In fact, me in particular, I'm the one crediting people. Miss Prosperity has sent over 15 million to my account. Hope today. you know me now. Well, you have us. About, <laughs> tell us about funding, Hajia. Tell us about, about funding. funding. How do you fund this? She single-handedly sponsor her. Wow. Yes. And divine care conglomerate. And uh, these are not loans. These are grants. She's doing so they're giving it out. Yeah, they are giving okay, it but out. But do you check we have never but do you check on loan. them to see how they are doing? Mm. We check on them. If that's why I'm telling up, uh, you that yes, that's why I'm telling you that I'll give you the handle to our fan uh, oh. our page, our foundation page. If you check there, they do give us uh, feedback and immediately they give. When my president is happy with it, before you know, she will add more money to for them. Miss Prosperity. In fact, as well we are done. talking, so don't be surprised that before I leave this show, she will say, give her this, give her that. <laughs> <laughs> that is the kind of person she is. We love what you're and, doing. And um, you know what, what is doing. very, very, very interesting mm. with you? Mm. You know, um, you are giving back with a smile. With a smile. See how so excited and animated you are you about know, giving back. You know why I'm happy giving out like that? Mm. Because I have tasted what hunger is. I know where I was before Miss Prosperity came into my life. Oh. I am just an ordinary engine grinder. Eh? Who prays and you to say you end. have three children? I have three children. Who at times I just, if I have, let me tell you, the highest money I made when I was grinding then one day was 1,900 Naira. And I was happy. Very, very happy. You I even, yes. Then you see this kind of opportunity. You understand? Oh my I am God. a kind of person that I know at times. I go hungry. In mm. fact, so there are times that eat. I observe fasting mm. and break my fast without the hope of what to eat. Wow, this amazing Good story. So getting this opportunity, you understand? And I you know the my... areas to go because mm. you've been you there. Been there. Yeah. You know the territory. But yeah. well, let's hear from um, let's hear from oh. wow. Comfort uh, Gumimi Foundation mm. founder, uh, Mr. JB. Mr. JB, we're getting feedback now and see how mm. excited uh, mm. she, you know, she is to be giving and we're hearing her story live. Mm. Some people may not know your story here, but because you're a family member, we do mm. know. But tell us about the feedback you get when you touch and change the lives yes. of the people you meet. Okay. You know, being in the hospital is already a complex experience on its own. Then if you are challenged, if your health is challenged, mm. the mental, the trauma that comes with it. Mm. So getting a hand to mm. lift, to hold you, safe. to lift oh, you God. out, to pay your bills is huge. Mm. So tell us about the feedback. The How feedback. are they? Yeah. Uh, you see, uh, life is all about experience. Mm. There are some things you say, but because people have not passed through that process, they will not understand. Yes. What we are discussing now might not mean anything to some people because mm. some people grow on carpet, red carpet, mm. reception and all that. They don't know what people pass through mm. and all that. But I talk about myself mm. because I have gone through a lot in this life. I lost my father 25 years ago. Mm. My father started as a... Um, class teacher to secondary school to university mm. as a lecturer and all that so i know how he has impacted in the life mm. of his students mm. because they come to me mm. they are they are they are everywhere around nigeria mm. i meet the people whom they were rusticated from school mm. then my father absorbed them in his school mm. so i have passed through that and he shares the stories with us as the children so we know these people and we live with them and most of these people have been great people mm. the, in my last program with you people i told you that 
I didn't sleep for eight months. Hmm. The day I slept was when I reached out, out to widows. Yes, widows, you said so. Yes. And when I mentioned it, people contributed food, hmm. money. You see somebody carrying a cup of rice hmm. and he's satisfied and fulfilled. Hmm. There's a fulfillment that is naturally inclined. Hmm. You can't that you can't feel it. You know, there are some things you feel when you touch, mm. like buildings. Mm. There are some legacies that you don't feel. Mm. They happen it's natural. Yeah. They are not they, etched in stone. Yeah, they are yeah. not tangible. Yeah. They are woven tangible. in yeah. lives. Yeah. Yes. You, it happens natural. Wow. There's a difference between somebody building a house, mm. living legacy, and there's a difference between somebody investing on the less privileged, mm. creating educational funding, mm. building charity organizations for people you don't know. Wow. Now, let me give you an example. I have, I'm benefic In fact, I'm so happy for the governor of Benue State, mm. Reverend Father Heisen Alia. Mm. He's a great man. Recently, he donated money into the UN system so that Benue State citizens would be employed in the UN. Wow. He gave the UN money that employ my people as volunteers, if they excel, absorb them into your agencies. And he tied my streets. I have a street in Benue, David J.B. Street. He tied that street. Tying that street was like a, like, was like a privilege. Because wow. so many governors have come and they didn't tie they the didn't street. But he came, he tied the street, which is supposed to be our basic amenities, what we are supposed to enjoy. Mm. But he tied the street. Mm. And then we met one on one, and I told him, I have widows that their husbands have died in motor accident. Mm. I have men that their wives have died in motor accident, and they are breadwinners of their families. Mm. With this scheme, with this project that you have brought, Please, can you allow us to give you people who we support so that they can also be absorbed as UN volunteers? Mm. And the link was sent to us. Mm. I gave some widows, I gave some survivors, mm. and they enrolled. Do you know that as I'm talking to you now, Comfort Ngumi Mijebe Foundation has four people that are invited for interview. So imagine that these people work in the UN, Mm. They have absorbed in the UN. They, Do you know the kind of families? Do you yes, know the kind of impact? They will change, they, they, they oh will change my their lineage. This and then you have cool. money, you build houses. You buy houses outside the country. Instead of you to invest in the people that need this, you die. But yes. it's a lesson. What it's you're sharing lesson. today is a lesson for everybody. for everybody. And we've learned now that maturity sometimes is not age. Mm. Maturity can come with experiences mm. you have had. You said it clearly here that some people, it's how they grew up. It's what they know. So they may not know as much as some younger people who have traversed some challenging terrains. But who do you think you are sharing today? And Jim is all about the world that are listening and are hearing. Mm. And we know that there will be a change in the way we do things. We have another feature coming up we hear, and it's from Portacot. That's River State. Let's talk about the philosophy and social impact of living legacies and impact in society. Portacot, are you ready? Philanthropy plays an essential role in society. In River State, some notable individuals and families are making a lasting impact through philanthropic gestures. I was raised by my parents, Ennis and Darling Briggs of blessed memory. Our home was always open to those in need. And my parents were, were known for their large hearts and generous spirits. I learned so much from looking after my grandmother. And to this day, elders have a special place in my heart. By God's leading, I set up the OB Lubrix Foundation in 2001 in honor of my husband, the High Chief Obi Lubrix, perhaps was the greatest philanthropist to emerge in River State's Niger Delta. He was our sole benefactor. In healthcare, our Care for Life program launched in September 2001. Since its inception, we signed on and improved the lives of over 600 beneficiaries for life. Our records show that to date, the OB Lubrix Foundation had dispensed 30,527 glasses. 
Our last outing was in September. Our 100-man medical and non-medical team, including seven surgeons, performed 120 surgeries during those five days. Under our education and scholarships program, where 1,300 students have received scholarships, the most prominent of our education initiatives, however, is our River State Law School Students um, Scholarship Program, where to date, 990 law graduates of River State origin received computer laptops and 120,000 Naira each. I grew up um, taking care of myself through school. So from my uh, university days, I will be taking the little money I have today to go buy something and I see the gate man hungry, I'll give it to him and I'll go back home and eat nothing. I now find myself in a position where I have a platform to give more. So it becomes, you know, uh, a thing of joy to be able to reach out to as many people as possible. So it has been a part of me and my husband's philosophy is to do good. So apparently I complimented his idea of trying to give back to the society. I've assisted um, the women to be able to reach out to the elderly. I work with Rotary to give back eyesight to the blind. Because I own a school, it's been quite easy to give scholarship. Recently, I walked into um, uh, Fidelity and a lady greeted me. She was, she was so excited to see me, I couldn't remember who she was or who she is. And she said, you gave me scholarship for six years. I, I was shocked because I, I didn't remember her from Adam. A young boy that was not in school, but his attitude was something else. So it was used as a wrong example. So I thought of educating the man, the mind of the man who made them better people, and uh, seeing the pain of people. So we gave back to Prince Anders the Foundation. So from then till today, over 500 and something students have passed through that foundation. The good thing about this foundation is that we don't know the people. In today's world, the importance of philanthropy and its impact on the community cannot be overemphasized. The widows, the physically challenged, the age, have a foundation for them. So that gives me an opportunity to reach out to them. Like the boys I actually helped in my kingdom, it did stop violence in the kingdom, you know, because they, now, they were not getting fully employed. My son who comes to school here, he gives my, my kid free education. Thank God I'm at the free education until he, he finished school now. We know that there's recession everywhere. But out of nothing, she still brings something to widows. She still remembers us. Widows are, I would say, perhaps the most vulnerable group of the large number of underserved people in Nigeria. As we envisaged, our interventions have an immediate positive impact in the lives of our beneficiaries. For example, a woman gets surgery done for fibroid that she has been unable to afford, free of charge. As my husband died, my mind feel bad. As I, I, how long I will suffer all this suffer? But God help they empower me with this money. I take and they manage for my family. And they eat from inside. My children, they eat from inside. They take and they finish the university. Up to now, I don't train two of them for the university. Giving back to society through charitable initiatives is not only a strategic move to address social issues and transform lives, but also an opportunity to build a legacy. We're in the village and uh... And I said, oh, who is this? And I said, oh, I'm the grandchild of his person. I was given a pass. Which means, what you lay down, will sit you tomorrow. More so, some NGOs are creating lasting change in their communities and the states. We as NGO, we are also playing in this direction to see how we can help people. For example, in a community called Molu in Delta State, we have brought in solar mini grill electricity facility where they have not had lives in the creation of this world. And we have been able to touch their lives and today they are happy. Together, philanthropy and social impact form a powerful force that can make a significant difference in the world. Okay, welcome back and well done. Uh, the, your messages are coming in in hundreds. Everybody's looking for help and some people are saying, well done, Hajia. Ah! 
my daughter is a beneficiary showing sewing machine and food stuff from Hajia. Oh, so real beneficiaries are writing in and um, Hajia wants to tell us a short. Hajia, tell us that story. Hajia, share that story. I mean, yeah. to hear. You know, I told you people that before I met for any prosperity. Mm -hmm. The old, the thing I do is grinding. Yes. And the highest money I ever got was 1,900. 1,900. And I took 300 from that one night to buy biscuits for children. Oh. So in January 2022, when we started the food drive, you mm -hmm. know, the first money she sent to me was very good. Mm -hmm. When she asked me to write budget, I wrote budget. She said, no, this is not, we are not feeding them like beggars. That she don't want to feed anybody like beggar, that she wants to give them good meal. When I even gave the second budget, she added another extra money times two of the money. You see, when I was going to bank, <laughs> that was the first food money that entered my account. I carried two bako, you know that bako sack? I took one inside. When I went to the bank and collected the money, I put it inside my hand like this. Then wear my hijab. I said, see, this money, even if uh, pocket pickers that are smelling money, they cannot collect this money from me except they cut my hand. They will take your hand. hand. They will take my hand for because this money, I'm going to do the work that I'm assigned to Oh do my it. God, amazing. Uh, Dr. Kutube, do, uh, uh, sorry, I said Dr. Kutube, I was going to go to Dr. <laughs> yeah. Newton Geza. Mm. Do you know him? He yeah. said so many things. About, what does he, he said in his small corner. Yeah. Uh, I wanted to speak about him a bit. Yeah, uh, you see, Newton, is he's a great man. Dr. Newton. Yeah, yeah. Dr. Newton, he's a great man. You know, having legacy is not yeah only important but yeah. also a moral obligations oh, that we yeah. own to our coming generations mm. there are people who are called naturally called to be uh, uh, medical doctors yes there are some people who are naturally lawyers they just want to go to they, they just go to school hmm. to acquire those to acquire the skills hmm. newton is an exceptional person hmm. He's very exceptional. Mm. He has done so much. He can, do you know that? He can be in Makodi. Mm. He can be in Jaws. He can be in, you know, he's just everywhere. Oh my God. Hello, NTA. Hello, NTA family. This is uh, Ms. She, Shemikia. Shemika. That's our the Divine Care. Okay, the Divine Care Conglomerate Foundation on behalf of our president, Ms. Prosperity Diana. Mm. Jay's Bolo. Bolo. Mm. I want to express my profound gratitude for hosting us and highlighting the huge impact we've made mm. over the years. Yeah. We do this from our spirit. Mm. So it's a joy and a special love in all we'll do. Thank you for highlighting us. Thank you for what you do, first of all. <laughs> Thank you for what okay. you do. Mr. Mm. Jebe, well done, meanwhile. Mm. Yes. Um, let's look at um, trauma in terms of those people we talked about in hospital. We talked about them getting psychological care because sometimes the food is there, the medicare is there, but moving out of the hospital now, how to rebuild their lives. Tell me, how is your foundation looking at that trajectory? Are you making a difference there? You take hospital bills. When they come out, what happens? Oh, uh, you know, like I mentioned earlier, we support sufferers of various forms of emergency trauma cases, we link them to psychological counseling, educational scholarship, skill and vocational training of their choices, mm. helping them regain sanity and dignity back to the society. Mm. You know, there are some things it can't take away from people. It is our people's decisions to be who they want to be. Mm -hmm. That is why I've decided to make a positive means from my negative ends. Mm. So some people, they, it's, it's hard to bring them off from the dilemma they find themselves in. A man lost a wife and children. He cannot forget it yes. easily. He cannot forget never. it. Never. No, it's, it's like you never forget. Mm. But the hope is that the hurt will okay. diminish over time. Now, this is something that happens. The love that you share with people is very important. Mm. That is the medicine to forgiveness. Mm. When you are so much in love with people, Hmm. The goodness you do to them makes you forget the yeah. bad things this that This is a secret you just shared. Oh, yeah. share. Because many people have not been able to find yeah. this. Yeah. So, for example, now, you are my wife. Mm. God forbid. Mm. And you died in a motor accident. And because we have had a series of happiness, mm. joyful times mm. together, it overtakes the tragedy that happens. Mm. By the time you start thinking that, oh, I, don't, I lost my wife. But you, something in your mind will tell you that, ah, but I was good to her. Mm. I did well to and her. And she was good, good to, to you. Good to me. You, you understand? Five years now, 2019, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, five years. 
Mm. I'm not married mm. because of sweet memories. Somebody who will replace that space mm. is not there. Mm. Now, when you take people that live with trauma cases, mm. you make sure that you ask them, what do you want to do? Mm. What they wanted to do that they cannot do for themselves, mm. you provide for them. Mm. So it takes their mind off. And you're able to bring a smile yeah. to their faces. Yeah. And yeah, you said something about a child that was... Yes. Uh, um, we talk about it okay. and then we can... We don't only to... stop that. Divine care doesn't only stop that feeding and mm. empowerment. We also mm. help people with disabilities. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you see, aside the empowerment, we also have a skill acquisition center where we train women okay. in learning how to sew. Okay. And they don't pay a dime. Oh, we provide one. them with all the necessary good material one. needed until ah. their graduation. Well done. We are the pick of the show. And uh, somebody said, Hadja, we got to reward all of you. Please, we want to come to Aya in Igala, Mela, Odulu, <laughs> local <laughs> government of Kogi State. Right. Now, Mr. JB, your last words. Tell us uh, your last words. Yeah, you see, it is uh, very difficult to see how we can support humanity. And there are people out there who are capable. But because of the, how the world revolves around, they are afraid. Please, our plea is that people should come to our help. We need support from mm. people. Yeah. From, we are, from a real, our aims and objectives are from our hearts. People are afraid of foreign finance and all that because there are a lot of NGOs now trying to siphon money from people. Mm. People need our help. People need our help. Especially now that we are trying to introduce proximity to rescue, building emergency unit at federal highways where people can have access to free medical care. Okay. We really need the government support, philanthropic support. People who are willing to support us, we are open to them. And like Haja here, we are also ready to work with you mm. in any area that you feel that we are ready to support well okay. so, so we we'll really appreciate and welcome everybody that okay. is ready to work with us okay so before you go far, you somebody want. says um mr debe come to gombe to be our governor um before i round it up i want to okay I want to say thank you for giving out your time to watch us first. <laughs> then to all of you saying you want to partner with us, yes, we are open for support and partnership so that we'll be able to touch more life and extend it to various states. Okay. Thank you very much. Well <laughs> and Nigerians, remember, mm. kindness can always change Go the narrative. Yes. Just stay kind. That's all. It takes care of a lot. Please come support, you know, our family here today. Let's do great things for Nigeria. Together. Okay, goodbye. So uh, we'll be responding to your messages even after the show because a whole lot of you are sending your message. Thank you. You can touch lives. God bless God Nigeria. Bless you.